Welcome everybody to Practical AI. My name is Jeff and this is Peter. Um, we're glad that you're joining us today. We try to cover AI topics that are relevant and interesting and we try to hit it from both a technical and non-technical perspective. Today we're going to talk about Meta's Llama 2. Peter, uh, give us the overview of their product and their approach with this product in the market, which I think is a little bit unique in the AI space right now. Yeah, so Facebook Meta just released Llama 2 last week, or actually a week and a half ago. And along with it, they also released a paper along with it to show that Llama 2 is an improvement over the first version. And the main difference with Llama versus Microsoft or OpenAI is the model is available now for anyone to play with. So researchers, programmers, anyone can download it, play with it, and kind of do experiments. Whereas with OpenAI, they stopped releasing their models after GPT-2. So Llama 2 is essentially a direct uh, competitor to ChatGPT? Yes. Yep. Okay. And um, this has the look and feel a little bit like open source or, or an open source mentality. Is that a safe uh, a comparison? That's a really good question. If you ask the purists, they'll say that it's not. But if you ask people that are that just want to do things and aren't purists, it, it it definitely takes more open source approach to things because now you can download Llama 2, you can play with it, you can look at the model, you can see how it's made, you can see all the weights, and you can, more importantly, you can take it and experiment and make it better and fine tune it and make it do things that you want to do. Let's step back just for a second and describe for the non-typical IT person a little bit how the open source world um, ex exists, behaves, and why it exists. So originally, open source was a pushback against corporations like IBM, some microsystems, and Microsoft, where to use any software, you had to pay a license. Right. So a long time ago, when you and I were, were young, the only way to get software is you, you had to pay someone. And that cost anywhere from a couple bucks to a couple hundred bucks. Like Office used to cost hundred dollars to download Microsoft Office and you would buy it in a CD or DVD and you would put the disk in and you would install it. Open source started around uh, late 80s, early 90s when people from MIT and Berkeley thought, okay, we, we don't like this idea of corporations owning intellectual property. And so one of the most successful projects in the open source world is, is Linux. And Linux was started by Linus Torvald. When it first started getting popular, Microsoft was really afraid and said, oh, you know, that, that thing's not, it's never gonna work. It's not gonna scale. You know, you shouldn't use it because you don't have some way. Linux was an operating system at this point, competing with Microsoft's um, yep. Windows, essentially. Yes. Yeah. And it was competing against uh, not only that, but also IBM's operating system. AIX. So, yeah. <laughs> AIX and then Solaris from, from Sun. Yeah. You had um, the graphics uh, companies like Silicon Graphics had IRIX. And then HP had HP UX. So, and don't forget about OS2. Yeah, OS2 from IBM. <laughs> and early on, people thought, well, this is crazy. Like, who would want to use a free piece of software? Well, the great thing is that anybody that could program could download it. And if they had the skills and time, they could improve it. And that's exactly what happened. Fast forward to today, the cloud runs predominantly on. Linux. In fact, all cloud providers run 80% of their stuff on Linux. And Linux is a, is essentially a, a crowdsourced developed operating yeah. system, right? Because in the open source community, the walls to your kingdom, there are none. Whereas with, <laughs> with Windows or, or Microsoft, 
they they literally have walls to their buildings and and they have people that work on their stuff and the ideas that would come out of that but in the open source world it's wide open so it, now fast forward to this llama 2 thing yeah. um meta is kind of taking an open source approach to ai so it's yeah. it, you know walk us to that that transition into this and how it's the same and how it's different well it's similar in that they they want to compete with Azure, with Microsoft, and OpenAI, and with Google. And the reality is, there are a lot of people that don't work at those companies that do interesting, fun stuff. But if you keep it under lock and key, it's really hard to convince them to come in and give you, Meta, their IP by signing a contract and saying, hey, you can play with our model, but everything you do is owned by us. <laughs> like, like no researcher at a university wants to do that. It's like, yeah. no, if I'm going to do fun, interesting research and make a breakthrough, I want this to be in, in the open. So your options are you go work for Meta, Google, Apple, Amazon, or Microsoft, or you work in a university or you work in open source, and then you can do whatever you want. Okay, so Meta, here's this title from Wired. Um, so there's obviously a, a spin here or, a, or an angle, and they're saying that they're upsetting the AI horse race. So how would, how would this, what, what would Chat GPT be afraid of? What are they concerned about? So the, the, there's a couple of, of things that, open as you'd be afraid of one is that a smaller model performs just as well so for example open ai doesn't publish how big gpt4 is but there are some people that think it's a mixture of 16-way mixture of models of 180 billion parameters and there's eight different versions of it which means there's close to a trillion parameters that they're running just to run ChatGPT. Whereas with open source, the Llama models are smaller. They're three, there's a three billion parameter model, there's a 17 billion parameter model. And so those things are way, way smaller. Okay. And it looks yeah. like, uh, at least on first blush, it's getting, you know, the word on par here with yep. open AI. And um, they, I was surprised to see this unexpectedly popular. What, why, do, why is that? Why wouldn't this have been expected to be popular? Yeah. Well, yeah. That, so that's the spin from Microsoft and OpenAI, because uh. their interest is in maintaining control and maintaining lead. And this just goes back to the Google paper that was leaked called "We Have No Moat." And so th this is referring to the old idea that for a tech company to be dominant, they have to have a moat to protect their market share, right? Um, and so that paper from Google was saying, hey, we have no moat, meaning we can't defend against open source. And that's true because if we look at history, Microsoft was dominant and then Linux came in and ate his lunch. IBM was dominant and then they went and bought Red Hat. <laughs> sure. And so here's uh, just one of the blogs out there that that's talking about this. And so this was an internal communication um, in inside of Google where they're afraid that there's there's no protection. They've got no way to 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 defeat the open source monster that they're that they're looking at, right? Yep. Yeah. And Google knows this intimately because most of Google's infrastructure runs on open source. If it wasn't for open source, Google would not exist. Right. And Google actually has a summer of code that they've been running for about like over 15 years now where they sponsor and pay for interns or college students to, to contribute to open source projects. So they, they recognize that open source is super powerful. Hmm. Uh, but at the same time, they still have to play the corporate chess match of we want to maintain lead in our position 
but we still don't want to piss off the open source world. <laughs> um, Git, GitHub is, uh, is, is that an open source platform? So GitHub is open source platform that Microsoft bought a few years back. Oh, they did. Okay. And here, um, Llama 2 is up on GitHub. So this means for the, for the lay person that uh, you can go download Llama 2, right? And, and play with it. Now, are you able to, um, I think, it, how much crowdsourcing is going on or is each download separate and distinct from sort of the, the open source behemoth? So it's probably hard to know exactly, but there has been a flurry of activity from researchers and from other people that are just playing with it. So, I mean, I think there's thousands of downloads already since it's been- Will, they be, will they be adding to the existing model? Oh, okay, they will be. Yep. <clears throat> and are they paying for this or do they have to pay for it? Nope, it's totally free. So that that's, when, when the first version of Llama got leaked, I think it was purposely leaked, <laughs> but within a week and a half of being leaked, researchers at Stanford was able to kind of improve it using the low ranking adaptation. And they released Alpaca within a week and a half. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's fast. Like the, the innovation piles on quickly. What, at any point, do you need do you owe a license a, a fee or anything for this with, with Meta? So with the version two, there's a commercial license. If you develop something cool that you want to commercialize, you will have to go and pay for a license. Okay. Okay. Yep. So you can essentially take the open source thing, yep. put it over to the side, maybe do some of your own stuff to it. But is, if you ever want to make money off it, you just got to pay meta. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. And the biggest benefit to the world is today, if you use open AI, you have to upload your data and then they'll fine tune the model for you and charge you a fee. But thing is, is they now have the data. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you download Llama 2, it's on your system, it's on your servers. No one else has access to it. And yeah. so the data is a secret sauce right now, which is why OpenAI won't tell the world what the data set is. Okay. All right. So last question then is, um, how do you think this will impact the, the world of AI? Like what's, what's, what's going to happen? How, how does Llama 2, you know, how does their footprint like reverberate throughout the AI community? I think in the next 12 to 16 months or 18 months, you're going to see a lot of innovation coming out built on top of Llama 2. Okay. Yep. And, and that'll be great because OpenAI is a big company, but they can't compete against the world. So sell your Microsoft stock. <laughs> <laughs> no, they'll, they'll still you know, do what they want to do, which is put it into every single product, starting yeah. with Office 365. So like, you know, if it's good, I would use it. I mean, I use Word, I use Office. It saves me some time, I'll use it. But I also want the flexibility to then do what I want with it, do cool, fun experiments, and then do other things with it, which with Microsoft, I can't do. Well, okay. like we talked about last week and a couple of weeks ago, this idea of uh, Chappie GT getting dumber or alignment, you know, if Microsoft's version is just kicking out subpar responses relative to what I'm expecting, and I flip over to, you know, either, you know, the Google version or the meta version or whatever, some, you know, kid in the Philippines, right? right. Um, this is all of a sudden, I'm going to be using the one that I trust better, at least for that period of time. So, yeah. well, this is great. I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to watch this over the next uh, several months and see, see what progresses and see what happens to ChatGPT. If yeah. they continue to lose <laughs> users, <laughs> which seems to be happening. Yep. Good. Well, thanks, Peter. This is a uh, good for those uh, that are listening. Be sure to subscribe and uh, you'll uh, hopefully get uh, a video or two per week. Take care.